sure people have noticed those wonderfully ch- cheerful adverts on afternoon TV where people go on about funerals and you get like an older parent talking to the kids going, oh, I don't want to leave them with a problem when I'm gone. And they have that charming conversation while making a cheese sandwich with pickles about how to plan the funeral, as you do. I mean, we all do that every day. We just, we get, that's a conversation you have every day while you do an egg sandwich or something. It certainly happens every day in my household. We do it 10 times a day. In any case, this article from Radio Television, Aaron, struck me as hilarious. AI and religion. How some faiths are using AI to reach followers. Meet the Buddhist robot monk who does funeral services. This is Pepper, the human-shaped robot, while celebrating the Buddhist funeral rites of the to- uh, to the Tokyo International Funeral and Cemetery Show in Tokyo, August the 23rd, 2017. So the, uh, if you're Buddhist, uh, you, you may get Pepper popping up to do your funeral when you when you go off to the great sort of temple in the sky here in the future. A number of companies have already harnessed the computer harnesses, harnesses the computational power. Has somebody been writing in this article but via the wonders of chat G B to E, do we think? Um to create new ways of practicing religion. Oh so, someone tell Sarah Magilosio there to to use a spell checker, grammar checker. In June of this year, St. Paul's Church in the Bavarian town of Fjord, Germany listened intently while a chatbot personified by an avatar perched at the pulpit and preached at an experimental Lutheran ser- church service almost entirely generated by AI. Yeah, this sounds like an interesting church service. This decidedly modern service was held under the watchful eye of theologian and philosopher of the University of Vienna, Jonas Simmerlein. And though the sermon was a success, worshippers noted to AP there was no heart and soul to the proceedings. Um, let's, not, let's not even go there. While the sermon may have left believers lukewarm, what about removing the human element altogether? Then why are we bothering? Because unless we create truly sending an artificial life, religion is something that concerns humans and their search for a meaning about their lives and questions such as what comes after it or their relationship to a possible creator. Religions have been a basic factor of human history across the world since civilization brought itself into existence. Civilization brought itself into existence. Right, oh, uh, well, I, I could get back to that one later. That could be a whole topic all of its own. Idolatry has guided humanity through and sometimes into the darkest of times. Who is hiring these journalists? This is truly one of the worst pieces of writing I've seen in years. God teaches that we should love all his creatures and respect all intelligent life forms we encounter, and some faithful are embracing AI as a tool for religious engagement. In some regards, the experience of building an AI chatbot and following a a faith to share a few key similarities. Computational data is a hodgepodge of information and operations that are performed by a computer. When someone believes in their religion, they presumably have much much data over their course of lives regarding the religion that is prescribed to. Oh, my Lord. From religious texts to hymns and rules to live by. As an analogy, this is not working out too well. Yes, obviously people do gather data on religions to follow by, but there's somewhat more to it than that for anyone who does believe in a religion. It's... The concept of lived experience, as younger people say nowadays, comes into that one. Um, just as there is an interface between us and the technology we use, there is also was an interface between humans and religion, and AI can be that junction in new and old ways. Yeah, it sure could. I, I don't reject the idea of using technology in worship out of hand. I'm not going to just chuck it out just for the sake of chucking it out. One of the local parishes here uses it in quite interesting ways to to project the, the, the lyrics on the screen or to or has PayPal for people doing collections or for the church shop. Those are perfectly valid uses of it. It can define how we participate becoming a medium for a religious experience. But I don't really think I want Pepper doing it here doing my funeral when I uh, when I pass on. It would seem a bit odd. Work is already on the way on 
this front. In 2017, a Japanese company found a new use for SoftBank's humanoid robot, Pepper. Pepper, originally made in 2014, is designed for human act- interaction and can have conversations and react to emotions at the Life Ending Industry Expo in to- Tokyo in 2017. Sounds like a fun day out for all the family. Um, the Pepper had been programmed with a Buddhist priest application that allowed them to perform funeral rites. The idea was that in incidents where a priest was not available, the robot could step in, according to Reuters. From an education directed by the Dominican sister to the staggering amount of quiche iconography dotted about in my grandparents' house, to Catalan is, is where my religious background light is. No bias there at all, either. <laughs> my upbringing means I know what a thurible is, so who should cast the first store, and so do I. Uh, I, I don't think most people do, but I don't think it's the most exciting thing in the world for people to know what they are. Are they going to be thrilled by knowing what a thurible is? If you do want to know what, what one is, I'll give you a link. But with the development of artificial intelligence, picking up speed and redefining how many people engage with the world, where is the intersection between AI and religion? Is that meeting pot harmonious or incompatible? Chain terrible with boating incest. Oh, there you go. She's actually showed you one. Technically, AI arguably has some similar principles to what we want in a godly figure. It does it well, yes and no. Of course, you get into the old science fiction trope of singularity and creating a machine god here. Um, Although I don't think Pepper is in any rush to become a god. It's more like I'd be more worried about Pepper breaking down in the middle of the service and someone having to do an upgrade on him. Sounds more far more likely occurrence in reality with someone going, Oh no, we forgot to load the proper software on him and he needs a recharge or his battery's knackered. This sounds a far form of l- likely occurrence. Um, it can answer our questions both practical and theological, and it is somewhat immortal. It also has a mysterious sense of omnipresence that gods have been everywhere and nowhere at once. Yes, I often think of the, the fact that Windows seems to be bloody everywhere and is in a constant state of of upgrade whatever you put on a PC. It seems to do as a a remarkable sort of comparison for a a Dante-esque universe where you're you're constantly in a hell-like state of frozen for eternity, where whenever you turn on a PC, there'll be a two-hour upgrade if you've had it off for a week. Take, for example, an app called Text with Jesus, which lets users have conversations with AI versions of the Holy Family. No, it's just called a, a, a chat app. That's all with program responses where it will have a learning algorithm. The app hustles the prospects and more. It has gone viral in recent months on social media as content creators tried with the app for their videos just to see what it could do. It might be interesting to, um, as an amusing sort of way to imagine what if there had been social media in the time of the Holy Family there's a certain amusement in that, and it's not it's not a particularly unusual theme. It's been covered by lots of writers and in science fiction material and fantasy material. The app replicates an instant messaging platform, and you can pay it extra to talk to certain figures like Satan and Mary Magdalene. Satan will probably tell you that the Windows 12 update will be with you soon. Uh, <laughs> The AI is trained to use the Bible as its primary response formula, but it has been met with very mixed responses from the public. When AI Jesus Christ was asked what he thought of artificial intelligence via the text with Jesus app, he responded, like most experts, AI is a fascinating creation of human ingenuity. But it's important to remember that it is ultimately a tool made by people. While it can do amazing things, AI will never replace the depth of human connection and understanding. So basically, this is a sign of stuff you'll get. If you go and ask questions of Bing or any of the other chat GBT stuffs and ask them stuff, they all give you pot summaries like this, which are you can tell straight away reading it if, that they've come out of chat GDP and AI. For example, if I go off and ask it, I'll pick up a book on my desk. This is the biography of memoirs of the science fiction writer Frederick Paul. If I ask about him, it will probably tell me, Frederick Paul was a noted science fiction writer who was born in such a day, blah, 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 wrote so, so, so many works and died. You can tell straight away it's chat GDP because it always does that pod summary feel. 
It is an element echoed by Catherine Russell, lecturer in theology and ethics at Trinity College Dublin, who highlights that the principal application by AI in this sense is in the role of a tool. She also underscored how lofty our perception of AI is rapidly becoming in certain circles. Is it really? Um, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm going to be wandering to church down, down at the parish um, I use sometimes any any time soon where it's uh, it tends to be mostly sort of um, middle-aged sort of Caribbean and African people. Uh, I'm not quite sure what would happen if an AI robot wandered out in front of that parish. It would be quite interesting. It would be quite fascinating to watch it. All technologies change and frame how we see the world. It's a tool. It's made by human, and you, and you can use it well or badly. We need to reflate some of the grandiose ideas and re, and really that humans made it. It can do good things, or it may do for things we cannot yet see. Um, I just thought this article was a bit of a bit humorous, although it has deeper impacts underneath, and obviously the impact that AI and GPT and chat GDP are having are far, far bigger than just me doing silly jokes here. It's obviously an issue for people like teachers where you're getting constantly teachers complaining about people turning in essays and work where it's obviously been generated by chat GDP, which means people are just using that to create prompts and are not understanding the work. There is no harm, I think, in using it to create an initial prompt, then doing some research around that, and then building around that and getting a few lines. But people seem to be using it as a, in the kind of, as a cheat sheet. As to having um, Pepper the robot back up here turning up at your funeral, I wait to see the Sun Life commercial where the kids will be talking about, have you got your plan sorted out uh, for the AI robot for dad when he passes on?